We do have Mike Pavlichko connected now. I believe he's joining us, the man from WCTC covering Central Jersey High School football, also the Rutgers Radio WRSU broadcast administrator, my good buddy. Mike, thank you for joining us this evening, and uh, let's uh, let's talk some high school football. We don't usually do that enough. How are you? Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. I'm doing pretty well. So, so what's going on with you? Are you live from somewhere tonight? We are at Memorial Stadium in New Brunswick. We've got New Brunswick taking on uh, the number seven team in our top ten, which is North Brunswick, uh, which has a D1 prospect that you'll probably be hearing about, a guy named Miles Bailey. Um, but, uh, yeah, we've got – and and for those of you Rutgers fans out there, if you remember Nate Harris from those mid-2000s Greg Schiano teams. He was on New Brunswick's title team in 2003 – was their first title in almost 80 years. That was a team that had Dwayne Jarrett on it, by the way, who went to USC. Nate was a, a preferred walk-on with Greg Schiano and uh, was a letter winner over on the other side of the Raritan. So, uh, yeah, kind of need to be here tonight for this one. Awesome. Sounds like a busy night. All right, Mike, let's get into it because I know you and I have these discussions basically weekly at this point about the yes. playoffs. And, yeah, and uh, Mike, pa- for those of you who don't know, Mike Pavlichko has been – uh, pr- a big proponent of trying to figure out what this Bill Bourne power index is and why it's relative for the playoffs this year, and it weighs more than the power points this year. So, Mike, uh, j- everybody's confused about this, I, me, me included. I'm getting very frustrated about it, as you know. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the BPI is 60%. Power points are 40% of the weighing for uh, playoff positioning. There's not really been any info released about the BPI throughout the entire season, despite no. what everybody breaks out. But it seems like... Whatever they're doing, it changes week to week. What do you think about that? It does. So here's the here's the story uh, in his brief. I don't know. How many hours do you have, Nick? No. We got four hours. I got a few hours. hours. I don't. Right. You have four <laughs> hours. I don't. I'll be on the air at seven with a game. All right. So here's the here, here's the story. Um, I, you know, I wanted to know what it was when it was first instituted. And so what I did was I uh, decided to email Bill Bourne. He says, well, I, I can't talk about the formula. Um, the NJSIAA said, well, it's Bill's formula if he wants to talk about it. And so we kind of ping pong back and forth and realized that I wasn't going to find out anything about it. And so I talked to a couple of coaches I know who were very into the PowerPoints thing. And I said, uh, I said, listen, let's, let's analyze this and see if we can figure it out. So the first week of games, week zero, took a bunch of games. And I, I, tried, I tried two things before I, I realized I'd kind of hit upon something. One, I says, all right, so what do, what do we know? What do we mathematically know? Well, number one, it doesn't include group size. That was the big knock on PowerPoints, so it's not going to include that. All right, so what else do we know? I said, well, we know each team has a born power ranking, and he says it's about the strength of your opponents. So I said, well, it can't be just about the strength. It's got to be about some results. So let's not try a win or a loss. Let's try points. So I tried margin of victory. That didn't work. I tried um, – I tried – I said, let me try points against the spread and see what happens. And so I got a bunch of numbers, and I, I, I got kind of close to where Bill Bourne's numbers were. And I said, well, let me see if there's some sort of pattern here. So I, I made a little graph, all right, just to see what happened. And Mathematician you know it, over here. Well, I, you know, I used Excel, so I'm not that good <laughs> at math. Uh, two and two is five, right? So anyway, so I, put, I said, here, make a spray graph. And once you know it, all these little dots ended up basically along a line. And I had some that were slightly off, and it'll draw you a little trend line. I said, it's right along that line. And what I did was points gained or lost in the Bourne Power Index versus points over or under the spread. And what I found out was that for every four points you beat the spread, you went up by one point in the Bourne. For every four you lost to the spread, you went down. So if you have an 80 and a 60... The 80 is 20 points better than the 60, according to the Bourne Power Index. That's how he explains it, right? He says you're 20 points better in the projection. So if you win a game by 30, you beat the 20 points spread by how many? Uh, do the math for me real quick. <laughs> 30. You beat the spread. You you beat a team by 30. The spread was 20. You beat the spread by 10. We both went to Rutgers. We know that. So yeah, of course. <laughs> okay. So you beat it by 10. So now. You, one, you go up a point for every four points you beat it. So 10 by to by four, two and a half. So you go up two and a half points. And would you know it? That was it. And then I started noticing that there were still a number of games that didn't quite fit. And then I noticed that they were all blowouts. And I had capped them at 35. And so if a team won 40 to nothing, I capped them at 35 nothing. And none of those games fit on the line. And when I put them all back to their original scores, 
they all went along the line. And so I started to think, well, maybe the blowouts count. And so I started talking to John Fiore, the president of the New Jersey Football Coaches Association, and um, he said, listen, they're a little bit more lenient in the beginning of the season with blowouts. And the reason being, the Bourne Power Index starts with your number from the end of the previous season. So if you're an 88 at the end of last season, you're going to start this year at an 88. But you might not be an 88. So we're going to make the blowouts count a little bit first couple of weeks of the season so we can get your team to a representative number of where you are this year. But in that way, to me, that encourages blowouts. Of course. Now, just uh, quick, just quick, just uh, quickly clarify for the audience right here. When you say spread, usually that means betting. Obviously, you can't legally gamble on high Born school sports. Born has changed his website to projections. So there you go. So, so that is now yeah. the projection. So when you go on his website and you click on New Jersey, you can search by class, you can search by right. team, and you can search projections. So you can put two teams in. Now, he disabled that function. So what you got to do is you got to find each team, and then you just got to do the math. So you got to go, all right, 75 and 64.5, and then do the math and realize that it's 12.5 or whatever the heck it is. So all you need is the Casio to figure it out at this point. <laughs> but that is how it is. Now, I've been told that I don't have the formula exactly. There's a game value somehow that determines how much teams go up or down. So I felt really confident after the first two weeks. I said, look, it's divide by four. Right. And I went to a coach, and I said, you won by this, and you're going to be this tomorrow. And when the numbers came out, I said, Coach, what number do you have? He goes, I have this, the same one you told me. I said, you're darn right you do. So I was feeling really confident. I went on the air with all these predictions, and then I got half of them them wrong. Yeah. So So now the number appears to be six. Now you divide by six. So at some point that early season, the games are worth a little more, and the blowouts seem to count. But now it's uh, it's a different ratio, and so maybe that's the game value. And, and and why some of the games were mixed early and some were not, because some teams played week zero and some didn't. Some had buys and some didn't. So not everybody was playing their fourth game. Some were playing just their third. Some might have had two buys and just been playing their second game. So that's why it would vary. Now, here's the bottom line. I don't care what the formula is. I don't really care if they count a couple of blowouts in the first week of the season. I don't think it's great, but if that's what – most of the football coaches think then go with it and that's fine but my problem is that no coach that i have talked to understands what happens the only coach i've talked to understands what happens whether you win or lose beat the spread the projection whatever you call it this week the only coach is john fiore the president of the njfca i have not talked to uh, north brunswick We're at this game tonight. Mike Saipot, he's the head coach. He has no idea. The West Orange coach, he doesn't know. I called him. He says, wait, you're the guy who wrote the article, right? Yeah, okay. (laughs) He says, we've been passing it around among the coaches. Um, Nobody seems to know exactly what it is. So we're being told, well, just trust it and go out and win. And that was the word I got from the NJSIAA assistant director, Jack Du Bois, who's in charge of football. He says, well, you just got to trust it. Right. He says, well, how do you trust something you don't know? So this week... As I'm analyzing games, because what I wanted to do was I wanted to go back and see what would happen if there was a blowout cap. Right. If there was a blowout cap all the way at the beginning of the season, would it be much different? And I looked at, it's not your area, but I looked at North 5. And I will tell you that it took me about six to eight hours to figure it out. Because here's what <laughs> happens. Now, here's what happens, okay? At first, I looked at it and said, well, let me put a blowout cap on this. So here's a blowout week one. And this team would have gone up by three instead of four points, so I'll just take a point off their total. But no, you can't do that. Because once you take a point off in the first game of the year, the next game where their spread was 20, well, now it's 21. And now each of those teams will go up a different amount, and and it cascades down. So if you have ah, – pick two teams that would play each other in your area in week one. So week one we have, uh, let's just give you an example. How about uh, Ma- Mainland and uh, Absagami? Mainland and Absagami. I know Absagami hasn't done particularly well. Is that right? Okay. That is correct, yes. But those two teams play each other, right? Right. So now when those two teams play, if it's a blowout and Mainland wins by 50, and I say the cap should be 35, now the difference in that game is going to be two points. But now when Absagami goes plays its next game, and if their Bourne's a 30 and the other team's a 50, 
now their born is going to be 32 because they capped the blowout, so they didn't go down as much. So now the spread's only 18. So now whoever wins or loses that game is going to go up by less than they did. So now Absagami and their opponents affected, Mainland and their opponents affected, and then the next game, each of those four teams, when they play four different teams, those are affected. So now eight. So it's a cascade. Of, it, you can't just take it off right. once. So in it a goes so, down so, the whole so, season. So in a nutshell, Mike, basically the blowouts at first counted. Now they don't count. And the whole spreads became the projection, right. just so the listening audience can clarify this. Uh, so basically w- w- it was blowouts, yes, and then now it's blowouts, no. The spreads are now projections. And right. Frankly, you've done the most amount of work I've ever seen on this, and you're, you're this is pr- the most investigative reporting I've done in a 15-year news right, career. Right, that I had. And, so and, this and, is... I'm, and I'm looking at it as you, you were probably the closest one out of anybody in the state to getting this right, uh, unless your name is Bill Bourne. It's pretty close. It's pretty close. And and listen, I'm learning, and there may be more changes down right. the road. I don't know, but you know, once we learn them, we figure out what it is, and we'll know it for next year. Now, it may become public next year because they may decide to use it, and they may buy it. The NJSIAA. Right. So. We may, we, that, that may all work out. Mm-hmm. My point is, what's the rush to do it this season? Why aren't we running this at the same time but in the background so we can analyze it every week and the coaches can kind of see how it works? And, like, what was the rush to get, you know, to get away from only using PowerPoints? Right. So, so Couldn't we yeah. have just done this on a test like this is the trial, but we're using it for real. Right. So yeah, I, I, I think that's what everybody, at least down here, uh, for those for those who are listening, would want to know is instead of just making this a trial run, this is for real, and it may not be ever perfect. And uh, b- b- before we let you go, Mike, uh, essentially, you know, I, I would encourage everybody down here to read your stuff. For WCTC uh, on, uh, on the whole Bill Bourne Power Index and this whole dynamic, I mean, you're basically writing something different every week, trying to de- uh, trying to get more out of it. But I, I would say eventually, um, at, le- at least I think it's part of the NJ- NJSIA's plan to eventually introduce the true state championship for football, which I think yes. is what they want to do down the line. And I and listen, I like that part of it. Um, I listen, I even like the idea of the Bourne Power Index or something else as a complement to PowerPoints. Yeah. Um, because, I, l- listen, I've kind of, best example I could give, it's like having a House of Representatives and a Senate. Yeah. You have one that's based on population, and you have one that's equal for everybody. Right. So you hear you have one that's based on group size, and you have one that's based on, you know, what you actually do in a game. And it takes into, it's more than just winning and losing in this. But then you also still have PowerPoints. The point is, it's not about whether I like it or not, because that really doesn't matter in the long run. Nah. I can have my opinion, but of everybody course. has one, you know. Hey, hey, and, hey, um, we know the saying. And then, you know, you, you know, it, the coaches have to like it, and the and the the players have to like it. And everybody else has to likes it, like it. And and listen, if you want to like it, that's great. I, I I just think you need to know what it is. You need to know the criteria on which you're being judged. If I'm going right. into some competition... So you can have a real you know, opinion I, on it. When I go play football, I know i got to score more points than the other team. That's yeah. what I've got to do. Yeah. And in PowerPoints, you knew whether you had to win this game, what your opponent had to do. And you know what? Part of it, part of it, that's the fun of it. If you talk to some of these coaches, they love figuring out and going, hey, if this happens, this happens, that happens, we get in. Point is, cutoff weekend, nobody can sit there definitively and say, hey, if Mainland wins, they're in. And if Mainland right. loses... These three things need to happen. Nobody can say that right. now because you and seem to say, well, Mainland needs to win by 20, and if they only win by 10, then this other team needs to win by 40. That's too much. Yeah, and, and, and in essence, that's the huge problem at the end of the season. All right, Mike, we appreciate the time. We appreciate you coming on. Good luck in your broadcast tonight, and uh, I, I will see you Monday, my friend. I'll throw out my Twitter, at Mike Pavlichko, P-A-V-L-I-C-H-K-O. Good luck with that, but you'll find it. Nick <laughs> yeah. retweets all my stuff, so of just course. find yeah. it there. Please go follow him, read his stuff on WCTC. Mike, Thanks, great, great job as always. We'll talk Thank to you, you soon. Sir. Thank you. All right, Mike Pavlichko with us.